Hi there. It's around the 30th or maybe the 28th or so of August. And these, these videos, some of these videos, you'll forgive me, are a bit out of order because I've just got too many videos to post all at one time or they'd be real, 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 real long. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to put them together, hodgepodge here and there, do the best I can. This is Sultane, and there's a, let's see, there's a lot of, there's a lot of figs that are ripe on this tree all over the place. It's just a beautiful tree, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? Here, I'll walk around it for you. Look at that. Just a gorgeous tree full of fruit, just the way I like it. Nice thick branches, like I've been telling you about. Look at that. Let's open a few of these up. Oh boy. Sultane is a very tasty fig. It's a French fig. I've been growing this fig successfully for several years. Mm. That's about as good as it gets. Oh, aren't they beautiful? Mmm, that's got a, it's got a flavor. I, I mean, you know, you know, I don't think there's a variety that stands on its own as a variety, and I'm not talking about the Mount Etnas, which almost all of them are practically the same, and there's about 60 to 80 of them, but with a couple standouts, as I've mentioned to you before, but this is not in that category at all. This is a French fig, Sultane, and wherever you see a fig that can truly stand on its own as a separate variety. I can tell you that the flavors are unique. And that's why I love just testing them all, tasting them all. I don't like to condemn one type of flavor or another because there's, it's sort of like music. I mean, did you ever listen to classical music? And you, and you might say, ah, I don't really like classical music. How many people say that? A lot of people. How many people like classical music? Well, a lot of people like classical music. Look at all these figs. Okay? But even the people that don't like classical music, they'll tell you, oh, well, you know what? I like the Bolero by Ravel. I love the Bolero. You see? Or some song that, you know, that stands out in their mind that they don't mind listening to or they actually like or love. Whereas maybe the rest of them, Beethoven or Bach, they you know, I don't like it. Hold on a second. Let's taste this. This one is really good and ripe. Mmm, that one is so good. That is Apex. That's an Apex fig. This is an Apex fig. This is so sweet and so flavorful and so rich. Rich and flavorful. Mmm. Mmm. This is a good fig. It's winter hardy. It's delicious. It's a good fig. Really good fig. Look at that. Look at all these figs. I love this time of year, you know? But remember, remember when I told you that I want my figs to grow on thick branches. I do not want flimsy branches. I want figs that can support, or branches that can support my figs. I want figs. I don't want a lot of branches. And I don't want you to want a lot of branches. I want you to know the difference. And some of the techniques that I've been showing you, I want you to use them so that you have a tree that's laden with fruit. Look at this thing. I mean, who wouldn't want that? Look how beautiful. I mean, I'm, I'm just having the time of my life. Mmm. Oh, wow. Mmm.
is to eat another one. This is a this is a big big beauty. Look at that. Let's let's take a look at that one. Man. Well, I'm not gonna stay here too much longer. Sultane. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. That is so good. Mmm. Okay, I'm gonna make my rounds here and pop up maybe next to another fig tree in a second. I'll come back to this one tomorrow. I need a bunch more of these figs. Unfortunately, the birds haven't fooled around with them too too much yet. I don't even have a net over it. I see a really big one up there that I. Oh, that was that was really nice and ripe. And this one up here is a beauty. Okay. Sultane. Well, we're going to stop here. I see the birds have been getting to a few of these figs. And these are my Peter's honey, which I've been eating so, 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 so many of. Oh, gosh. There's some more beautiful ripe ones. Let's take these. Oh gosh. Oh, these are another apex. This one, a honey fig. We've talked about this many times about the bum wrap that some of these honey figs get. Well, guess what? They don't get a bum wrap with me. Look at that. Perfection. Let's open these up. There we go. Can I get it in there? Can I get it focused? I don't know. I'm going to gulp that whole fig down. Mmm. <laughs> wow, that's perfection. If you live in 7A or warmer, plant Peter's honey. It's winter hardy, and it's so fruitful, and it's so delicious. I love it. It's a great addition, and you're going to get bored anyway eating all those Mount Etna figs. I do. Mmm. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's good. get all those honey spots brown spots look at that let me just take a bite out of this one look at it oh look at that delicious there's so many figs on this tree mm. I will say even the birds prefer these <laughs> they really do I I need to keep my net on this tree or uh, the figs will will get at it okay well let's move on a little the little one that looks like I can just pop that in my mouth mmm delicious now we're talking about Alma a little bit and you will remember in my last video not too long ago that has the name Alma in the title somewhere there was only one ripe or two one was ripe and one was ripening and now we have a whole bunch and they're, they're good and ripe let's slip over here here's one that's almost overripe but it's drying on the tree I hope it hasn't spoiled We'll take a look in there. Maybe it has and maybe it hasn't. I'll let you know in one second. Let's see. No. Um. Mm, that's okay. That's not bad. It's sweet. It's good. Mm-hmm. A little messy, 
but sweet and delicious. Aren't they beautiful? Let's get through this net here so you can see a little better. Again, another very fruitful tree that was grown properly so that it would the branches would sustain a lot of fruit as you can see and there's fruit just everywhere on this tree get the leaves out of the way here I'm having a little bit of trouble sorry I can't see whatever it's heavily laden with fruit all over the place Difficult, difficult time with this camera. Very, very fruitful. Extremely. I see another really nice white thing over here. This. There we go. That's a pretty one. That's a nice one too, right there. I get these leaves out of that camera. Pretty. Yeah, beautiful color. Let's put that. Let's take a look at these. This is fun. I love this. Let's take a bite out of that. Mmm. That's perfect. That is perfection. Mmm. Very delicious fig. See for yourself. Alma. Very vigorous grower, very hardy, very fruitful. I, I don't know what you would want more than this. And it's a variation from some of the other varieties that sometimes get a little boring. I'm well, speaking mainly of the hardy Chicago types, and look. Man, that's good. I love the hardy Chicago types. Hardy Chicago types. You know that from all of my videos. But like I said in one of my videos recently, in my opinion, <laughs> there we go. In the taste category, they're very, very, very good, but not excellent. That's that's my opinion. Very delicious. Are they worth growing? Of course. One of the best varieties that you can grow in your yard, in a cold climate especially. Do they compare to Black Madeira or Italian 258 or even Smith? No. But those you have to grow in containers in my 7A zone. So I do that. <laughs> Simple as that, I do it. Hmm. I'm almost figged out. That's not, that, was, that was good. That was good. Okay. So grow for variety. No pun intended. Um, grow different varieties. Here's one that I will recommend to you any day of the week. Alma. Grow it. It's a good fig. It's healthy. It's disease resistant. It doesn't crack a lot. It can withstand the weather. <laughs> is it fruitful? Look at it. Is it fruitful? Yes, it's fruitful. It's very fruitful. Very healthy. There's another nice ripe one down there. I should grab it, but I've got more figs to eat, so. All right. Put you on pause for a second. Now we're back to this tree which is Tiger, LSU Tiger. And even though when I showed you a video a couple weeks ago and it was just, just covered with figs, it still has some late figs that are getting ripe and some beauties too. And that's what's so wonderful about some of these fig trees. You know, they, all right, they produce a lot in the beginning, but they still produce a few later. Some don't do that. Some produce everything in a couple weeks and they're done, you know, or a week. But here are some... Just beautiful tiger. Let's pop one open. Oh, wow. There we go. I hope that's coming through. 
tire. I'm going to enjoy this. These have a unique flavor and I, I highly recommend Tiger. Mmm. I'll remove this net if I can. Here's some beauty, beauties in here. Let me, I'm having the most difficult time I think I've ever had this darn camera tonight. Well, on my phone. Here's another. Here's another. They're all. There's quite a few. There's quite a few. Um, let's open another one. Certainly worth doing. Look at that. Wow. I gotta put this one aside. I know Debbie likes these too. I gotta find a place to put this. It's so good. I'm gonna put a couple of them right there for her. She likes she likes those LSU tigers and she certainly likes the Peter's honey, so I'm gonna bring her in a few as soon as I'm finished with this video. Hold on one second. I'd be remiss if I didn't visit my in-ground, substantially large in-ground Rondi Bardot. And it certainly isn't last or least. I mean, it's still pumping out figs. Even now, even though the vast majority of them I picked long ago but look how many it's still fruiting it's still making all new figs look at it it just keeps pumping out figs this is one of my most valuable players in my collection whether in a container or in the ground one of my top figs there's still plenty of ripe figs in here too Let's pick a couple of beauties. Oh, here, look. Look at, look at that. Rondi Bordeaux. Rondi Bordeaux. Look at, look at, look at all these new figs that are going to get right now. <laughs> it's the end, the very end of August. And it's still pumping out. And it, it was my earliest producer, both in the ground and in containers. I think um, O'Rourke was maybe a day or two earlier in the ground. Uh, right around the same time, but almost with guaranteed certainty, uh, Rondi Bordeaux is the first good fig to get ripe in containers and in ground. Mm, that was really good for me and my zone. But look at all these, all these figs are going to get ripe. All of them. And we still have some really pretty. I don't know if I can get the camera in here. Beautiful ripe figs. Perfectly tree ripened. And ready to devour. I certainly like making my rounds and coming out to my Ron de Bordeaux. And eating these delicious fruits until my heart's content. And I'll tell you what, this is a tree that will make your heart content if you're a fig lover, as I am. <clears throat> well, we still have quite a few other varieties, a lot of varieties like. This multi black. It's just got a lot of fruit. It just keeps pumping out fruit too. It's a wonderful, a wonder. Look at the color of that. Look at that. I'm having trouble with my focus lately. I, I apologize. I just something's wrong. I have to fool around with this phone. And look at look at all these Mount Etna types here. Look, look at this. Look at look at the size of these things. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the color of that one. Isn't that beautiful? That's good. Mm. 
different flavor than the others I've been sampling here. Delicious. This Malta Black is a little different than many of the other Etnas. It probably would be my first or second uh, fig that I would recommend of that category. Um, not this tree. This is Mavrasica. This, this I, I like too. This is a wonderful tree. It's just look how much fruit is still on this tree. It just, it just keeps on going. It just keeps on producing fruit. All these trees just keep pumping out fruit. Look at this. I mean, you've got to hand it to the trees. And you just got to say, you know what, thank you. You've done a wonderful job. I've been good to you, and you've been good to me. The symbiotic relationship. They don't have any feet. They can't pull up their roots and walk around and water themselves or fertilize themselves or prune themselves and I don't make figs <laughs> not without them I don't so you know we have a symbiotic relationship I love them they love me it's wonderful and they just they just never disappoint okay so that's even, even the Malta Black, look at all the new figs that are growing. Look at that. And they're all going to ripen at different stages. There's still plenty of time. Unless, you know what? I shouldn't be saying that maybe too much. Hold on a second. Because there's a the remnant of, what is it, Ida coming this way. And it's supposed to come over us, I believe, tomorrow. And so I guess I'm a bit worried about that because we're going to get a lot of rain. And that's going to not be a good thing. Never is during the harvest. So it's a good thing that I'll pick some of these. I'll pick some of these tomorrow, more of them. There we go, Mavrasica. Okay, let's take a walk. Here is a Celeste variant. And this one actually belonged to my father. And he had it for some 15 or 20 years next to his garage. I bought it for him for Father's Day. It was a gift. And I gave some of the cuttings away to other people some of the little plants that I made because it was such a producer it, and then my mom without let, letting me know she had a some tree guys come to the house to cut out some large oak trees and she cut the tree down it was I used to call it the ten thousand dollar tree it was the most beautiful tree it never got covered in 8a never got damaged very winter hardy some kind of a variant I sent away for it from uh, to California and it came in the mail and I gave it to my dad for for well, Father's Day but fortunately because I had given this tree to other people I was able to know where it was and I got one back last I got one back last year or the year before and I started putting cuttings in the ground and giving a couple away in it it's a larger than Celeste you can see it's larger than regular ordinary Celeste and I think better tasting. It's redder inside. Look, it's more. It's richer inside. You know, people say, Celeste, darn this focus. I've got to get this fixed. I don't know what's going on. Well, well anyway, you can see the color. I don't know what to do to get this to focus. It used to focus nicely. Well, Anyway, look at the color of the fig. And when people say that Celeste is a sugar fig or something like that, it's not. And some are. Maybe ordinary. There's so many strains around. There really are. And we've talked about that. But this is a good one. This is a good strain. Let me take a taste of this. Excellent fig. Delicious. Sizable. Larger than normal for Celeste and this is just a baby 
this is only its second year. Um, second full year, anyway. And it's still making figs. Okay, let's move on. You can see the difference between this and the last. They're pretty small. Some of these are a little larger, but not much. This is a different strain. Let me get my hand behind this if I can. There we go. Can you see that? I'll pick this one. Hold up. There. Much smaller fig. Different. Very this is a good one too, but it's Not quite as red inside. Very tasty. Very delicious. But small. Smaller. This tree is almost finished. Tomorrow I'm going to pick a few more on this tree and it's just about done. My large Celeste tree. It's been here for more than a quarter of a century. I've cut it back many, many times. Probably 28 years at least. And you'll see, like I showed you in my other videos, radical pruning. I cut them, I cut it down. Look, take a look. You can see. I cut this tree down two years ago. I cut it all the way down to here. Four foot tall. Everywhere. You can see that. Let you take a look. And it just grew. And it's producing lots of fruit. And now it's too high. And I've got to get up on the ladder to pick a lot of the fruit. It's just huge. So what I'm going to do is I don't know what I'm going to do, to be honest. I don't know. I might cut it down this year at the end of the season. Or I might let it go one more time. But next time it's going to go over that peak of that roof. It's going to go right up to the peak of that roof. No question about it. That's going to be a problem. <sighs> I'll worry about it later. I'll think about it. Celeste is one of those trees that doesn't like radical pruning for the first year. The second year and the third year, you're fine. Okay. But, you know, you have to do what you got to do. You know, uh, getting up on a ladder is not the safest thing, and it's difficult and inconvenient. This year I was able to pull the branches down, and I, I did go up on a step ladder, though. I guess I could get away with it next year. We'll see. Beautiful. Another hardy Chicago type. My black Greek Marius. Gorgeous. Tasty. Very healthy. Still full of fruit. And it will continue to produce fruit until the cold weather ruins the fruit or stops the process. Hopefully that's a few weeks away. There's a lot of figs on here. Very productive.